But he will also baptize us with the Spirit. What does that mean? Well, he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can come into our lives and transform us. All the things, all the sins that we were struggling with, the Holy Spirit will come and transform us and help us to to live a sinless life. So let us pray that the Holy Ghost will come into our lives today and fill our hearts up. Also, we'll couple this with Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Amen. So God wants to pour out his spirit upon the young people, upon the old people, upon everyone. But your hearts need to be prepared for the spirit. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will come into our lives today and fill us up with his power and strength. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that we are, we are available for your Holy Spirit, dear God. Let your Holy Spirit come into our lives today. Let your Holy Spirit let we accept your Holy Spirit. You said in your word that you will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and the fire. Holy Spirit, come into our lives today. Fill our hearts, O God, so that we can be transformed, so that we can change, so that we can live a sinless life. Holy Spirit, come into our lives today. Holy Spirit, come into our lives today. Holy Spirit, come into our lives today. Release your spirit upon us, Lord. Release your Holy Spirit upon us, O God. Release your Holy Spirit upon us, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, you said in your word that in that day you shall come to pass. You will pour out your spirit on all flesh. You will pour out your spirit on everyone. Lord, pour out your spirit on everyone. Let your Holy Spirit come into it. Let your Holy Spirit come into let your Holy Spirit come into our lives today, O oh God. We cannot change on our own, O oh God. We cannot transform or be transformed our, on our own. Pour out the Spirit upon us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Second Timothy 2, verse 20 says something very important that we need to pay attention to. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. 20. We're going to read up to 22. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. The Lord, the Bible is saying here that if you want to be a vessel for honor, useful in God's kingdom, somebody that God wants to use for the benefit of his kingdom, you need to be sanctified and, and useful and be prepared for every good work. So let's pray that the Lord will use us as young people. The Lord will use us in his kingdom to reach the people who, to, to heal the brokenhearted, to set free the souls that are in prison, to, to, to reach those who have not received the gospel, to reach them all over the world and be his amb ambassadors here on earth. Let's pray that the Lord will use us and make us vessels for honor. Pray the pray today the last time of Jesus. God. Speak to God, speak to him and tell him that you want to be a useful vessel. You don't want to be wasting your time here on earth. You don't want to be a, a, a profitless servant. Let us pray that the Lord will help us to be um, vessels for honor, to be useful in his kingdom, to be his ambassadors wherever we go, to preach the word, the gospel wherever we go. Let us pray that the Lord will help us stay in the name of Jesus. Oh God, make us vessels for honor, oh Father. Make us vessels for honor, oh God. Make us vessels for honor, oh God. To, to, to reach the to reach the heaven the gospel to all people. To glorify your holy name. Make us useful in your kingdom, oh God. Make us useful in your mind, oh God. We need to be useful, oh God. We don't want to waste time. We don't want to be a profitable servant of God. We don't want to waste time on this earth and go to heaven. We don't want to hear the words that pass from me for I never knew you. God, make us blessings for honor. Make us blessings for honor of God. In the name of Jesus. And I think I have a master of a heart. And each of the high of a And I think I have a master of a heart. And each of the high of a 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 in Jesus' name we are praying.
in Jesus' name we have prayed. Verse 22 says, flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of the pure heart. Let's pray one more time that the Lord will help us to run away. The Bible says we should, it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say we should just avoid youthful lust. We need to flee, run away from it. And what are youthful lusts? Youthful lusts are the things that make young people sin, are the things that, that make people young people indulge in sin. Let us pray that God will set us, will, will help empower us to run away from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Pray to God in the name of Jesus that you help us to pursue righteousness, love, and peace. Help us to run away from youthful lust. We don't want to be youthful. Lost in your Lord. We don't want to follow the things of the youth. We don't want to copy the world. We want to be transformed and be different and be set apart in the world. Make us a one. Make us run away from youthful lust. Empower us to run away from youthful lust and to seek righteousness, love, peace, and faith. In Jesus' name we are free. You're gonna say you're gonna to talk to us and you're gonna say this prayer. Lord, open the eyes of my heart to see you and to receive from you. Pray to God today. Tell him, Lord, open the eyes of my heart to, to receive from you and to see you today. Open the eyes of my heart to, re to receive the word of you. Pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, open my heart to see you. To see you, Lord, and to hear from you. You know, that's the highest. In the name of Jesus, we want to hear you speak to us, oh God. Thank you, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Just thank God for all those prayers, worshiping for all the prayers. Ask God to take over the rest of the of the program today, Lord. We thank you. We give you the glory of the Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Now, which is not this way, not the present. No, present. African. Hmm? African, yeah. Mm -hmm.
so many so many troubles have come to life. People still believe that people are enslaved by the enemy. So go and pray and listen to what they say. And also, the reason why they see this thing as horrible is because some people try to do things that they try to do that thing they 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 take out their body and put it outside in the corner of the street. Because they trust in the mighty man. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Okay. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. What I'm saying there is saying that whoever has been born of God does not sin because God has a seed in God. I don't want to say that he's not. Inside our body, 
Jeremiah 10, 11, thus you shall say to them, the gods that have made the heavens and the earth shall perish. The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and, and from under these heavens. Okay, now the reality of that is the spiritual world of time and time. What is also the spiritual world of time and time? How does it work? The spiritual world of time and time. The spiritual world of time and time. The spiritual world of time and time. Now, what else can you do? What makes you do what you do? your master wants you to do? So, we're going to pray now that the real the reality is what you will do the last few years. There is nothing from power, there are people still from all those of the family, of my own life, and also anything that you say, and also bring about the spirit of the So, we're going to pray that every strong man or woman, every evil power, whether they're in the world, 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 whether they are in the world 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 whether they are
As we are gentle to wicked, concerning the growth, concerning the eye of the power, concerning the revelation, O Lord, of the way of Christ, and the I mean, concerning the revelation, O Lord, of the way of Christ, and the Let it be completed. Let every time be completed. Let it be completed. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 In the 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 name of
We thank you for the death that gave this opportunity. We thank you, Father, for resurrection that gave us hope to your kingdom. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your ascension, Lord, that gives us power and authority over the kingdom of darkness and the enemy. We give you glory because you are faithful and kind. There is none like you. For all power in heaven and the heart belong to you. There is none like you, Father. Have your way here today. Take absolute control. Let your name be glorified. Open the minds, the spirit, and souls of your children. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your name be praised and glorified. I come against every spirit of misunderstanding. I come against every spirit that misinterpret the word of God. I come against every wandering spirit and forces of darkness to be arrested today and destroyed. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Fill this place and wherever they are hearing me from with your presence, your power, and your spirit. And let your presence be felt in every room, in every house, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. There is no like you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can hear me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everyone that can hear me to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Glory Amen. to God. So I was uh, invited by the youth. Amen. Amen. To tell you to come for about 30 minutes. To tell you I spent uh, nine, six of my 30 minutes already. Is it 25? Uh, they say it's 25. It's not 30. All right. Amen. I hope I'll be able to finish within 10. Uh, I just, I was just told to tell you, come and present the importance, being the first meeting of the first event, and I will have to tell you the purpose, the reason for, for this. And we're going to have it, we're going to be having it the same time every month, the same time every month. And it's what it is tied to the, the what? The Kingdom Youth International. That is the name they have given it through the help of the Holy Spirit, the Kingdom Youth International. And uh, it's, a, in, it's an interdenominational meeting that the Lord has given opportunity to the, our young people here to start, to, be, to have to impact in the lives of all the youth around the world, what God has done in their lives, so that they can, this can provoke the, uh, a kind of movement or revival of the youth in the end times. Amen. So I'm going to tell you the purpose, the aims or objectives for this uh, program. Number one, I have six of them here. Number one is, is to let every child, every youth know, to let every youth know that they are God's heritage, including me that I'm talking to you about, that I'm talking to you today. I am God's heritage to my, to my parents. I am sent into the world as a gift to my parents to impact the nation where I find myself. 
uh, where I was born or where I found myself living. So I am God's heritage. Psalm 127, verses 3 and 5. I want my reader to come close to me so that we can make it quickly. Anybody that gets there, because I have to finish this within uh, 10 minutes, so that I'll be able to uh, uh, ask anybody that wants to start a new work with Christ today among those who are particip participating in the meeting. Amen. Amen. So uh, Psalm 127 from 3 to 5 tells us that we are God's heritage as youth. We do not belong to this world. We belong to God sent every one of the youth, every one of the child to the world for his purpose. Not to his purpose. Amen. Amen. For his purpose. And the book of Malachi said the Lord has planned. That was the reason why he permitted our parents to become one. The two of them became one. That they may be able to bring forth what? Godly children. Godly children. Can we see that please quickly? Uh, yes, we can read it. Psalm 127, 3 to 5. Read love. Psalm 127, 3 to 5. Mm -hmm. Behold, children are a heritage in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Go, go to Malachi 2.15. We have to do it very fast. I am given time and I have to keep into the time. Amen. Malachi 2.15. 2, but, but did he not make them one? He made the man and his wife one. According to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, and also the book of uh, uh, the Genesis 2.24, and this place in Malachi chapter 2, verse 15, he made two to become one so that they can do what? Having a remnant of the spirits. Yes. And by one, uh -huh. and seek godly offspring. Amen. Amen. So the Lord made man one, husband and wife to be one, and he made the rest. What does it mean by he made the remnant in the spirit? Hebrew chapter 1, verse 7, and Genesis, Hebrew chapter 1, verse 7, and Psalm 104, verse 4 tells us that he make he make us what? In fire, and he makes his angel in, in spirit. So the spirit, when he's talking about spirit, he makes the rest in spirit, he's talking about the angels. But he makes human beings, man and wife, and he allowed two of them to, to marry and become one flesh that they may produce what? Godly children. So that is one thing I want to know. The purpose of this meeting is to let all the young people know that they did not appear on earth by themselves. They are God's heritage into every home that they find yourself. So into every home you find yourself, you belong to God. You are God's heritage there. God has given you to your parents. You didn't appear for nothing. No matter what are the circumstances, circumstances around your birth, whether the parents were ready or they were not ready, whether they were living in sin or not, you are God's heritage. Whether the parents are abalists or unbeliever or not, whether they are believer or not, you are God's heritage because all souls came from God. So every soul belongs to God. Number two, the reason why this program is starting is to let all the youth know that they are made wonderfully. They are good people that the devil has planned for to turn them back. Every child that you see today, whether they are disturbing their parents or not, whether they are in gang, in, in, in gang or not, whether they are smoking or not, whether they are drinking or not, whether they are, they are, they are they are, they are criminals or not. Everybody was created to be good by God. And the Bible confirms that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. In the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, and Matthew chapter 13, verse 26, 25 to 26. We are going to pick uh, just two from them. Join Genesis 1, 31, what does it say? And Matthew 13, 25 to 26. Yes? Genesis 1, 31. Yes. Then God saw everything that was made. God saw after he created man. If you read it from verse 27, after he created man, he saw that everything that he made was what? And indeed, it was very good. Was very good. Everything he made was very good indeed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then Matthew 13, 25 to 26, what does he say? Matthew 13, 25 to 26. Yes. He says, why men slept, the enemy came. And he saw tears among the wheat and he left, he walked away. Yes. Read verse 38 of it. Yes. The field is the world. 
this good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The tears are the product of the work of the devil. You see that? God makes all things beautiful, including human. And he put his seed in them when he created them. That is what the Bible called his image. He created them in his image that they may be good and profitable and resourceful and peaceful. But guess what the devil did because of the carelessness of our lives and the parents? The devil sneaked in and he turned the good men and women, the good boys and girls, he turned them to be evil. And they become trouble to their society and community. And some of them end up in jail and in prison. And some of them end up, ended up in early death and, and a lot of more problems. And many of the girls ended up in premature pregnancy. In other words, premarital pregnancy and many other problems. Some in alcohol, some in drug, some in smoking weed and many other things. Because the devil sneak in due to carelessness of the parents and the carelessness of the boys too, because they did not have awareness that they were made good. And therefore, they became what you can see today to the society. But what I want to tell you now is that everyone that God has made is good, regardless of what they are passing through now, whether you are a sinner or you are not, whether you are presently smoking or you are not, whether you are presently, whether you have killed or you have not, whether you are good to your parents or not, whether your parent loves you or not because of what you do, you are a good person. You were made good. God created you and he looked at you and he said, this is good what I've done. But guess what? When the enemy sneak in because of carelessness, then the good person become bad. Why do I know this? Because the day everyone, including myself, the day I got born again, the day I got born again, I realized for the first time that I was good and the devil has made me bad because I regret every sin I ever committed. And I regret them up to now that I'm talking to you. And some of them, when, I, when I'm sitting alone, I cry about some of the things I've done in the past when I was in the world, when I didn't know him, when I was not working with him. Because they became pain that I carry every day, even though the Lord has delivered me from them. But whenever I remember those days, I am not happy. And those happened to me because I came to the world through some parents that didn't know him. And therefore, they, they, my parents also came to the world through their parents that didn't know him. And it, it went on and on until the Lord visited us and we were able to bring light into our own children that they will not end up their life the way we, our parents ended up their lives and wealth we have uh, inherited from. Amen. So the purpose, the second reason is to tell you that you are good and to stop the flow of generations that are uh, 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 that have been uh, 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 seized by the devil. Every generation, there are some generations that have been from one generation to the other, they have been seized and, uh, and enslaved by the devil. We want to break the flow of that slavery. We want to break the flow of the slavery that you, from your own generation, as a young person, you will know the truth and you'll be able to set your generations after you free and be that is coming ahead of you free from what the flow of the danger of the devil. Number three, number three reason for this program is to make you seek early your God, to make you seek the God very early at your early stage of your life at 11, 12, so that you will not regret what we, that we came to know God later, what we are regretting today. Because at the age of 10, 11, 12, you are building a life innocently. Some of us didn't know at that time that we're building a life. So we're making, we're building foundation of the life. And some of us are still and have also restituted many things because of the mistakes of those days. Because that is what we call restitution. Correcting old mistakes and errors because of what you have done when you were living in sin. So we put this program together so that every youth will not need to begin to look to beg somebody in the future or to begin to pay back what they have stolen or to begin to look for somebody that they have cheated or somebody that they have killed, a, a child that they killed, they, a, 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 they killed and buried or thrown in the water. And when they get born again, they now begin to look for the parent to apologize. The, the pain and the punishment will be, will be too big then. For instance, if you have killed someone and you did, nobody knew, you threw the body into the water, 
and they found the body later. And afterwards, you got born again. You to go to heaven, you must confess that you did you, you did that. Everybody must know that that body that was found in the water in 2002, it was me. I did it, I killed. You must be able to say that. And if you are not able to say that, there is no room to go to heaven, regardless of what you do. Because we can see that established in the Bible. In the book of Psalms chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. Psalm 11, verse 2 and 3. And Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to read from Psalm 11, verses 2 and 3. What does it say? Yes. For look, look, the wicked bend their bow. The wicked one bend their bow. They make ready the arrow on the on the string. They make ready the arrow on the string. That they may shoot secretly at the upright in the heart. That they may shoot secretly at the upright in the heart. If the foundations are destroyed, if the foundations are destroyed, you see that if your foundation of salvation has been destroyed because there are some sins that are too big to confess, you cannot imagine yourself confessing them because they are too big. How do I face the parents of somebody I kill secretly? How do I face the parents of somebody I poison secretly? How do I face somebody I have been a criminal or a armed robber? And how do I face the people I have robbed to ask forgiveness publicly? How do I do that? That is what the Bible says. When your foundation is destroyed, your salvation will be troubled. That is why God has laid this strongly on the heart of our youth to speak to young people so that they will not have things to confess in the future. So that they will not have restitution to make in the future. So that they will not have sins unconfessed before they depart from this world. The sins that will be too much for them to confess. You see, restitution that will be too much for them to, to do. You see, the experiences that will not that will be too bad for them to have. A lot of wonderful young people, they end up having two, three kids for somebody before they finally got married to somebody. You see. That was not what they planned for. It was what the enemy has done in their lives. Because they were good people. They were not meant to go through that. But the enemy moved them to move that direction because they couldn't control their life. Nobody has power to control his life alone. You don't have power to govern your life or to handle your life. And that is why God sent his son Jesus into the world to give us that power to be able to handle our lives and to be able to know the truth. Amen. Amen. So Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 says, You must remember the, the Lord your God in when? In the days of your youth, not later. Anybody that gets born again later, that does not get born again in the days of his youth, we have a lot of trouble to deal with. And those troubles are the reason why marriages are being disturbed now. Because the problem you had when you were young, the problem of sin with trouble marriage, with trouble future, May trouble foundation, may trouble education, may trouble your dignity and integrity of the future. There are some children today, because of the sin they committed when they were young, they were not able to fit into it. They are no longer able to fit into it in society. They, they can't get a job because it is written, the society has recorded imprisonment against them. They have recorded murder against some people. They have recorded many things against them. Life has been wasted. So that is the reason why salvation is meant for when you are young, not when you are older. But many of us did not get to understand that, that you need to know Christ at the time of your youth so that your future will not be wasted. A lot of future has been wasted from the time they were young. A lot of destiny has been destroyed from the time of their youth. And that is reasons for putting these two together. And I want to say all that three reasons quickly. Now, number four is to let you know the truth. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, and verse 44. If you know the truth, because the world is full about lies, the world is governed by lies. Environment, whatever you can see around you is lies. They do not show the reality of God's plan and God's purpose for the lives of every youth. And that is why the program is being put in place to let you know every month what are the truth of what God's word concerning your life, concerning your destiny, concerning your future, concerning your parents, concerning your existence, to know all those truths that the world does not make known to you, that the society is not bringing to you. Every lie that sickness tells you, every lie that trouble of life tells you, through the help of the word of God, you'll be able to discover that this is not true, this is lie. And through the truth of Christ Jesus, you'll be able to discover many things of life, and your life will become focused. And I go to the fifth one. 
fitting into manufacturer's plan. This program, number five reason, is to make sure you are fitted into the plan of your manufacturer. I call him manufacturer because he's your God, your creator. In anyone that creates some, something is a manufacturer. So God created us and he has give, he made us and he gave also the manuals of life that we must use to govern our life. Every manufacturer has a, a manual. When you see a mobile phone, it comes with a manual. When you see a refrigerator, it comes with a manual. A television set comes with a manual. And man, God created every human being also, and he made a manual available. That is the Bible. So you cannot understand your manual except you first come to Jesus, to God through, I mean, you come to God through his son, Jesus Christ. That is one another purpose for this meeting. Isaiah 61, verses 2 and 3, and also the book of Prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. It tells us how we can be God's planting, God's own planting, wherever you find yourself as a young person. We are not training you to be another pastor or evangelist or bishop, as said God wants you to be. But we want you to, whatever profession you find yourself in the future, you are a doctor, you become a lawyer, you become a, an engineer, you, you become a pilot, a carpenter, a bricklayer, a painter, whatever you God wants you to be, to be God's own planning, planting there. Yes, can you read that place for me? Two and three, Isaiah 61, yes. With this program is set for you to proclaim what? The acceptable year of the Lord, yes? And the day of vengeance of our God. To proclaim the day of vengeance of God. To comfort all who mourn. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn. To console all those who mourn across the world. To give them beauty for ashes. To bring them beauty for ashes. The oil of the oil of joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. So that everyone can become tree of righteousness. And you become God's planting wherever you walk, wherever you are, wherever you live, and living for God. Yes? That, he may be that God may be glorified in you and through you. Amen. Amen. The last one, the last reason for this meeting is to, be, to help you and to encourage you and to teach you how to make it to heaven. After your life on this earth is ended, after you finish here, or if, when, when rapture takes place, if, if you go before rapture, that you may be able to see God in eternity with God. Then we have two eternities. We have eternity to hell, in hell. We have eternity in heaven. And everybody you see on heart goes to either of those two. You cannot stay in between. It's either an eternity in hell or eternity in heaven. So the program is to help you as you are prospering here on earth, as you are getting a, a truth to live, and you are getting focus on how to be successful, you will also be working towards making it to heaven. And not only that, you will also be bringing godly children as you grow, and you, you grow to maturity, you get married, you also be producing what? Godly children. Because you'll be teaching them what has delivered you. The message of deliverance, the message of healing, the message of salvation, you pass from one generation to generation. And within the short time, a short period, the gospel, the true gospel of Christ will penetrate into every corner of the, of the world. Amen. Amen. So those are the purpose for this meeting. These are the purpose for this meeting. So I want you to make sure, invite friends, relatives. It's an interdenominational shadow program. We are not asking anybody to come and join the way of Christ evangelical ministry against their wish for attending this program. It is just to be able to spread the word of God to every corner, to every churches. When Jesus came, he was able to preach the gospel to all temples, all, 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 all said that he went through synagogues and churches. He ministered to them. The same thing with the apostles. And that is what we are doing. Because church of God is one. We must be united and become one. One single force to, this, to defeat and destroy the kingdom of darkness. And they'll be able to beat sin out of every young people. Devil has plan for young people. And we also must rise up to that challenge. Jesus wants us to rise up to the challenge that devil has plans over young people. He wants to destroy many people before they get to where they, they're supposed to be. He wants to remove your glory and destiny and testimony, your testimony before you get there. For instance, if you have been so much deep in many sins, 
and many trouble. The day when the day of your manifestation of your glory, the manifestation of your glory comes, then you will not be able to raise up your head because he has destroyed many things before he got there. So therefore, we want that to be known to young people that they will preserve themselves, that their future will not be wasted, that their glory will not be removed by the devil and sin before they get there, that their destiny will be protected and they'll be successful in whatever field of life that God will play them as God's planting. Amen. Amen. That is what I have for you today. And I want us to close our eyes when I pray for one minute. My time is up. I want to pray one minute. And I want you, if you feel like you want to give your life to Jesus, please, you can turn your mic on. Turn your mic on or you switch your camera on that we can see your face. By the way, don't be ashamed. There's no shame about salvation. There's no shame about salvation. We can do it. Open. I don't always have people to close their eyes to have people led to God because it's not something you are shy about. If you are graduating and you are offered a certificate, we don't ask anybody to close their eyes because we want to offer a certificate of graduation. Everybody look at those ones that are graduating. So you are moving from sin to God's field today, to the God to God's side, and therefore there's no closing of eyes. You feel like you want to do that? I want to do that quickly for you in one minute. Please turn on your camera if you want to do that. That can see you because I cannot. There's no way I can say raise up your hand. Turn on your camera. Let me see your face. If you want to give your life to Jesus at this time, whether you are two or one, there is joy in heaven over every sinner that has come to repentance. You want to do that right now? I don't have time. I have only this minute. They have given me by faith an additional four minutes to make it five. Amen. So please turn your camera on quickly. I want to pray for you and lead you to Jesus. Leave it so that you can, your destiny can be protected, your life can be defended, and you'll be able to make it to the kingdom of God in heaven at last. Heaven is great. Heaven is good. You cannot toy with hell. You cannot gamble going to hell. It's not a place to imagine. It's not a place to imagine yourself in. And even some people who have refused to give their life to Jesus, the art here will even look like hell to some people at some point of life. You want to preserve your life and destiny? Please let me see your camera now. Turn your camera on now. I can see you. The time is running out. I have three more minutes. Because the prayer is going to be short. It's one minute. Yes. Thank you. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. Yes. Another person. God bless you, brother dear. Another person. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for your children that have come to repentance today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will accept them. They were made to be good. The enemy turned around to make them evil and planted the seed of sin in them. Father, therefore, I present them to you today that you have mercy on them. You forgive all their sins. Cleanse their body, spirit, and soul with your blood today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Remove their names from the book of sin and sinners in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Let their names be written today in the book of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your blood clear the way every petition, every allegation, every accusation, every charges against you in the physical or spiritual I wipe them away with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. He shall be well with you. I command in the name of Jesus that the seed of pollution, destruction be removed from you. That the seed of God be planted in you. As from today, begin to live to glorify God. And everybody around you begin to be impacted with the light that has come to your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. That is the time. I thank you for extra five minutes. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's give a, a round of applause for Jesus for the amazing So I hope that through those uh, six points, we all uh, digest them, and really meditate on them. And I hope as by God's grace, as we're going through this program, you begin.
begin to see those three points manifesting in your lives in Jesus' name. So at this point, we're going to do a question and answer an answer segment. If there's any questions that you have based on what was just said, or on anything else, something that you were wondering, any questions that you've never really got the answer to, this is the time to ask. So if you'd like to, um, everyone will mute your mics and we'll just start from there. Any questions at all? No, no questions. Any questions that you've been thinking you had about um, anything you've been thinking about, about serving God, about being a young person, something that you're struggling with about this program, anything. If you feel like you're struggling with anyone, with anything, sorry, any questions you'd like to ask, feel free to unmute your mic and ask. We have a few more minutes left. Just feel free to type in the chat in the, in the group chat. Any question you had about serving God, about this program, about something that you've been battling with for a while, about what you've been thinking about, any questions about Christianity, about the, uh, the salvation, about faith, about receiving the Holy Spirit, any questions that you have at all, just type it in the chat so that we. So we kind of meet your minds. If you have the answer to any question, feel free to also answer the question. Anyone here online? Amen. Okay, let me ask a question to you guys, and I want to see your responses. So you all have to meet. I know you guys all want to meet, but at least I'll meet now. So, <laughs> so the question I'm going to ask is, um, okay, we have a question here. Right, so guys, we have a question. It says... Is it really possible to restitute from every evil one, from every evil thing one does before being born again? That's our first question. And our second question, okay, let's deal with that one first. Is it really possible to restitute from every evil thing one does before being born again? Before we move on, before we answer this any one, does anyone have an answer to that online? Anyone, the Holy Spirit has, has put the answer in the hearts online. If you want to answer that, you can please just unmute. Feel free. You guys want to answer the question? <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. So um, restitution is a is a very big topic, and restitution. If we all, if some people are wondering what restitution is, it is um, after you become born again. You then, if there's somebody maybe you have stolen from, maybe you have lied against that person, or anything that you need, you need to basically restitute and pay. Yeah, make secret thing, things known. Basically, making secret things known and even paying. Re Pay back for things that you have done unjustly when you were in the world. So that is restitution. The best example is um, the story of Zacchaeus in the Bible. When Jesus had came to his house, Jesus was telling him about returning all the things that he had. He was a tax master and he behaved very unjustly because um, he was behaving unjustly and unfairly towards his uh, clients. And so Jesus told him that all the money that he had stolen from those people, he needs to pay them back. And he did that. And that's, another, that's an example of restitution. An example of restitution is, another example of restitution is, for example, say if you have lied against somebody and they, they had suffered really, um, they had gone through a lot of suffering because of that lie that you have told against them. You need to go back and tell them what you have done fully, wholeheartedly, and ask for their forgiveness. 
it's a way of um, cleansing your conscience because you can't really move forward in your relationship with God, having all that excess luggage and excess baggage that you have, um, luggage that you have had when you were in the world. So is it really possible for every, is it really possible to restitute for every evil thing that uh, one does before being born again? I believe it is possible, but you cannot do it by yourself. It's possible with the, with the help of the Holy Spirit. You need to ask God for help and strength to do it because you can. And you can imagine somebody like Zacchaeus, maybe they were, he, had, he had duped a lot of people. Maybe there are a lot of people he had stolen from. But once he heard that message from Jesus Christ, that these things are of salvation, these things that you have done to people, they are not right. And therefore you must restitute and make all those things known to them and pay them back. And he was able to do it. And somebody who is only able to do that with the help of the Holy Spirit, with God's help, with his strength. The, the Bible says that my grace is sufficient for you. So with the grace of God, it is possible for someone to restitute for every evil thing they, has, they have done. If, it, if it's a situation where you cannot, you're, it's impossible for you to find that person that you have wronged, it's impossible for you to find them again. Then um, I think it's possible that you can let your spiritual leader or your pastor know that I had taken this from somebody a while, a while ago and I want to restitute. This is that thing. I cannot find them. It's very hard for me to find them. I cannot locate them at all. And so you can hand this over to the pastor and prayerfully you'll know what to do from there. So I think it is possible through the help of the Holy Spirit, through God's help to restitute for everything, every evil thing you have done. Yeah. But yeah, if you if you want to, so we uh, praise the Lord.
Right. Some people are having issues with the volume. So if you just put a thumbs up for me. Flash your mic. Just put a thumbs up. Flash your mic. You can put your thumbs up on Zoom. Just put your thumbs up on Zoom if you can hear us speaking. All right. Or just say yes if you can hear us speaking just say yes in the in the chat box if you cannot um put a thumbs up all right praise god i hope that has answered your question um if anyone wants to add if anyone oh you want to add to the answer i to ask the question okay All right, praise God. Relating to, we'll, ask, we'll answer this question secondly as it relates to the first question. He said, If um, is restitution now a sin if you do not carry out restitution after, after salvation? Is it a sin? Does anyone want to answer? Okay, we'll go straight to the answer because all right so the question is is restitution a sin we'll go straight to the answer if you don't do it is it a sin if you have not carried out restitution is it a sin let's open to first john first john chapter one from verse 6. First John chapter 1, verse 6. If you want to open up your Bible and read along with it, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. And then all the things that we have said that we know. It says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. His son changes us from all things. The Bible tells us here that when we want to walk with God, when we want to fellowship with Christ, we need to be living in light, not in the darkness. And when we're living in light, we have fellowship with Christ, and Jesus Christ can wash us of all our sins. So, presenting um, to this question, not restituting is like living in darkness. Because you are still keeping those hidden thing, the things unknown. Like uh, as I said, restitution is making hidden things known, bringing them to the light. 
if you're not able to bring things to the light, you're not able to live uh, live a, a Christian life. Because part of living as a child of God, you are transparent everything or that you have committed in the past and you confess it. And it's not you will not it's not by force. Nobody will force you to do it. Because when you're living in Christ, you will you will want to just um, clean to you want to just uh, clear your conscience and let all the things that you have done in the past, all the living things you want to let them know. Because you know that you are now living a life with Christ. You are living a new life. A clean sheet. There's nothing to hide anymore. And you're not saying that it's like hiding. It's like still living in darkness. So you must be able to present things in light. If you really want Jesus to cleanse us of your sins, if you really want Jesus to cleanse you of your sins, you must be able to live a, a transparent life, a life that is in light and not in darkness. Because the Bible also says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the darkness. So when you want to fellowship with that same Jesus, you need to step out of darkness and step into his marvelous light. Amen. So restitu not restituting, is a life of darkness. You're still living a life of darkness. So when you want to, so yeah, if you're in Christ, you're born again, born again, genuine child of God. It involves you, uh, all those things that were initiated in the darkness. So there's no point in being born again and you're still having things in the darkness that you did once you're in the darkness. It doesn't make sense. You can either be in the darkness or in the light. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right, so quickly, the next question is, how do you want, how does one receive the Holy Spirit into their heart? How does one receive the Holy Spirit into their heart? Do you like to ask the question? Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Unconsciously throughout, um, throughout the day, and we it's a, it's a thing of the flesh. Let me think it. And I say that because when we are living in the flesh, when we are living in the flesh, then we fulfill that's living in sin. If we open to Romans chapter 6, In sin, you're still living in the flesh because the body wants to sin, the flesh wants to sin. And when you're living in sin, then, then you are obeying the flesh. Let's open to Romans. Okay, okay. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Okay. Okay. Romans 6.16 says, Do you not know that whom you present yourselves to obey, you, pre you, pre you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Amen. So exactly what um, I said, when you obey, when you're obeying that one, whether you um, submit yourself to obey, 
you are that one slave. When you're submitting yourself to the flesh or to sin leading to death, you are then um, engaging in sin. You are sinning. You're submitting yourself to the flesh and you are a slave to sin. Also, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, it says, I say then walk in the spirit. This is how you can overcome that daily sin, living in the flesh. I say then walk in the spirit. All right, we'll read to verse 18. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that they do not do the things, so that you do not do the things that you wish, but you are led by the spirit if you are not under the law. Amen. So Galatians is saying here, when you walk in the spirit, then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's very clear. It is very um, ex it's self-explanatory. When you walk in the spirit, then you will see yourself resisting sin. You see yourself not engaging in, not obeying the flesh and obeying and doing what you wish. And so how to walk in the spirit, it says in verse 18, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So being led by the spirit allows you to be walking in the spirit and then resisting the flesh. So that's really the main thing. That is why we emphasize on the receiving the Holy Spirit. Because once you are led by the spirit, you are the sons of God. Like you are a child of God, like it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Once you are led by the spirit and you obey the spirit, you are then... You, you are then um, basically immune to walking in the flesh. And once you do that every day and uh, every, every step of the way, once the Holy Spirit says you cannot do this anymore, you're a child of God, and then you resist. And you, you are doing the thing, you're, you're doing the things that your body does not wish to do. And that is obeying the Spirit. Because our flesh, this our flesh, is the one that's allowing us to sin. It's the one that's making us to sin. Because our flesh is it's from, it's from the dust. And we, know, we normally love to sin because we have the nature of Adam in us. This, our flesh has the nature of Adam in us. And we all know what happened in the, the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. That is the first sin that was committed. And through then, sin was multiplying throughout generations. However, when you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit, when you submit to the Spirit, you obey him, that still small voice. You obey him every time you tell God to do something. Then you'll see yourself obeying the Spirit and not living in the flesh and not having the ability to live a daily because that's the whole reason why God sent Jesus to reconcile human beings with God so that we can start to become more God-like we can start um, living like Christ and obeying his word and true and really being able to please him and to do his will so submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit and walking in the spirit by receiving the Holy Spirit and, and following his lead that is what helps you to become uh, to stop living and committing those daily sins amen Verse 19. It says, I speak in English terms because of the weakness of my flesh. For what I will say also the rest of my spirit is in union and in one form of lawlessness, even in all lawlessness. So now, to so the members of the Holy Spirit that is in the Holy Spirit, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Not because of the inferior of the things of which you are now obeyed, but of the righteous things of God. But now, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit of holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the fruit of God is life and the life of Christ is the Holy Ghost. So, what you want to avoid is you must remain slaves in your heart and you have to keep your soul with godly sin. Because of that small man, you will have to sin in your mind day after day. For the power to offer the sin is the Holy Spirit that does the precise and every principle, even the principle of the Lord, what it means is not just a new convert, convert, the spirit of the It was the Holy Spirit because that's the power comes to all the soul, even if you do not know the But the Holy Spirit does the restoration of the life. So it's not about the Holy Spirit, so that you can receive the grace of God. And
just to round up that is a very good point because a lot of young people they might go to church after receiving an altar call they go back and they repeat those things that they were doing in the world again and it's important once you it's like a glass if i have a glass of milk if i keep pouring water into that glass of milk it will eventually be a glass of water and the the the, the solution will be, dil will be diluted but if i uh, fill it with more milk then there's no way it's going to turn in it's going to start looking like water when you have um received jesus christ when you're born again filled with the holy spirit you should be filling yourself up with the things of the spirit and it happens a lot young people the things that we watch the things that we listen to the things that we hear and the things that we see they are very important the bible says we should guide our hearts with all diligence the things that we watch and listen to and read they are very important you might think the music you listen to is harmless but however, after a few hours, you might be thinking about those lyrics or you might be thinking about that movie that you watched and it will be having an effect on making you lost and it will be having an effect in your heart. When you are born again, fill your things up with the, with the things of God, with godly music, not just any kind of music because we have uh, music that they, they say the name of Jesus inside, but it still has no um, spiritual benefits to ourselves. Filling yourself with godly music, reading the word of God, godly content and then you'll see that daily you'll begin to um daily you'll begin to see yourself having godly thoughts you'll see yourself being purified and you won't see yourself committing the sins that you do daily praise god um there's another there's another question here the last question before we end today because we are going over time it says how do we overcome telling lies how do we overcome telling lies overcome telling lies No, people to And that's 
also the good of all other things. The main way to overcome Yes, you will target the thing that you have. You will target that problem that you have. For example, if you have a line that this question is, you will target that line as well. And you will see the truth of all. It burns away every kind of work that you have to, including life. It burns away every everything that you have. It's not a complicated place of death, it's a place of law, power, and sound mind. If you're someone that's arrogant and denies the truth of everything, you have to focus on giving yourself the truth of all. If you receive the truth of all and receive Jesus Christ, you have to focus on living a simple lifestyle. Live in simplicity, not in arrogance. You have to make sure you live in simplicity, not in arrogance, and walk in the spirit. You have to make sure that you overcome those kind of things. The Bible says there's no point trying to overcome, I mean, there's no point trying to avoid that temporal punishment when there is eternal punishment for all liars. The Bible says, excluding all liars that go to hell to a certain point. So, like to answer the question, why is it so? And the way to overcome it is to follow the truth in the Lord. The book of Philippians chapter uh, 2, verse 5 to 10, also gives us uh, a great example of somebody we all know in the Bible. It says, let, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with, equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as man, he humbled and became obedient to the point of death, even to the point of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every other name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those of the heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. Philippians says something very important about humility, having a humble heart. Because when having a humble heart, the soul says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. If you are truly born again, the, 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 the simple thought of lying it should make you scared because you are now uh, somebody who fears God. And even as somebody, someone, the world might see it as a small sin, but you might see it as a big sin because you don't want anything to taint your righteousness. And we should also have live in humility because if you have a humble, some people, they might think, ah, if I tell this person the truth, they will, they will be looking at me as if like, as if I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person or something like that. They don't want to reduce their, their own value. They don't want to reduce their own value. And so it's good that you need to make sure that um, you're living a truthful life. Also, there are no such things as white lies. The Bible says that all unrighteousness is a sin. So even white lies, black lies, pink lies, blue lies, any kind of lies, it is it is not acceptable before God. We need to make sure we are living a truthful life, a transparent life. If you feel arrogant, you feel proud in your heart, then there's also another issue there. Don't feel proud. Humble yourself and say, if someone said, who did this? Yes, I did it, and I'm sorry. The shame, you might think, oh, there's going to be so much shame. People are going to be uh, mocking me. The shame will last, but it will only last for a time. Even Jesus Christ endured the shame. The shame will only last for a short time. So, um, yeah. and as the word of God says, you need to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. In verse 12, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Fear God. F run away from sin, flee away from any kind of sin, small or great, flee from them and truly walk as a salvation with fear and trembling. Praise the Lord. Also, this is not only specific to life, this is to all sins as well. Whatever sin you can carry in, whatever sin you can have to get to the Lord, these sins are from the devil. We know that already. And the more we to overcome in the world, you have to be a voice in the world. You don't care what this kind of world is saying. For example, this lie that you think that there's things in the world that you that you think that you're aware and you think, oh, there's some things that are listening in Jesus' life. Oh, there's some people saying that you can become spiritual and you can become like a uh, white lie or something like that. That's what this is about in the world. You need to be aware of your call. This is what the Bible says that this is what your God wants you to have to tell you. Don't just ignore the world and the time in your heart and that's the Bible that you can become Jesus Christ and that's whatever that means. Do not listen to any form of white lie or pink lie that comes in. Lie is a lie. Sin is a sin. Do not keep painting, do not paint in any color of light. The sin is what the sin is what you're doing before God. So there's no there's no the word of the world can't be any opinion that you can take in your heart that you can take to heart. So trust me, that's what you need to do in your life. If you want to walk, okay. Number three, verse number four. 
12. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, the throne of God. Amen. Amen. So based on that, we need to, it says something very important. All those things that easily ensnare you, all those things that easily drag you back to the ways of the world, you must lay them aside through the help of the Holy Spirit. Follow and endure the race. It comes with endurance, so it will not be easy, but you must push and pursue that goal, which is the kingdom of heaven. And you must look at all the examples we have in the Bible. The Bible says we have so great a cloud of witnesses. All the examples in the Bible are there to help us, especially, especially Jesus. Yes, he had, he had to go through shame. He had to go through um, carrying the cross. People spat at him. People mocked him. But you know what he did? He endured the cross. He endured uh, the shame and all that came with it. And at the end of the day, he was sat down at the right hand of God. So please don't be we are here to recognize that you have a goal ahead, which is the kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. We are all here because we want to go to the kingdom of heaven as young people, and we want to also help other people reach the kingdom of heaven as well. So we need to make sure that we run this race with endurance, and we also examine ourselves so that even though we're preaching to other people, we ourselves will not be disqualified. Praise the living Jesus. Last thing, last thing to Adam. Last thing to Adam. The answer to that question. You have to ask yourself a question at the end of the day. You have to ask yourself a question. The shame. Yes, you go to Jesus. But what shame is that? Shame is about what? 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 Shame is for Jesus Christ. I want to give that shout. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, so this is the end. This is the, all the time we have today. Unfortunately, we could just spend the day to answering questions and, and explaining the word of God, but this is the time that we have, and this is the first program of Kingdom East International Conference this month. In the next program, which is the 11th of April, invite friends, invite family, people you think will benefit from this. Invite many people so they can also be young people, young soldiers for Christ. Amen. So, um, Ivan, would you like to share a prayer for us before we leave, before we end the program? Hello, I have to pray.
to glorify your holy name and to your name. Amen. 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 Jesus. Shall we share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness, blessings shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of God forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. We'll see you again next month on the 11th of April. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, and also feel free to join the group chat. We'll share details on how to join the group chat for all young people. We also have a group chat where we give you guys information on the next meeting. We also have discussions there. So make